Slovakia is no stranger to China. Bilateral trade growth was at the world high of 46% last year, remaining as China's fourth largest trading partner in Central and Eastern Europe. Slovakia is one of the first European countries to sign Belt and Road Initiative as well. The Memorandum of Understanding certainly is the very first on the continent. With that in mind, I talked to Richard Rashi, who is the Slovak Deputy Prime Minister, about his country's CIE participation. Since he is in charge of digitization and formatization in his country, we also asked about technological cooperation between the two countries. You are in charge of the digitization information in your country. Tell me about how much do you see in terms of common ground when it comes to digital cooperation? So far, lack of international efforts yet. You know, digitalization and digital transformation is uh, our future and it's the future of our life. For example, we Slovakia, we are in the European Union and we have a single digital market, so it means that we are not able to live alone and I think that also in, in the global framework we have to cooperate so even if you have any country which you want to separate or countries which want to build barriers it's just for a short time but you know time is important and time is precious time is very important and um, for example we started with a special pro project we called it the uh, digital transformation of uh, our industry because maybe you don't know but Slovakia is the biggest producer of cars uh, per capita we have only 5 million inhabitants but we produce more than 1 million cars and what is important because of automation and uh, digitalization we have more than 40 percent of our jobs at risk mm -hmm. because of, of robots and new technologies so that's why i said that we have to cooperate because we are not the only country with the problems because yeah. of digitalization and it's a problem for for all world and i guess your job is to really to negotiate quote unquote uh, about the potential of digitization with all of your other colleagues who are in charge of industry and trade, I guess. Yeah. How does that work? <laughs> I think it works because uh, they also know that it's a problem mm. also for other countries, but not only in the European Union, but also in Asia and in America. So mm. As I said, we have some politicians who build barriers, but finally, we will have to cooperate. Mm. The European Union churned out some of the basic technology standards and those are some of the rare ones in the world yet. So how do you see this uh, EU effort? How much do you think, geographically speaking, how do you see those standards and the process of building the standards and whether those standards can be implemented in an economy like yours? Uh, I think that uh, in the level of digitalization and, and the new technologies, and I have to say that uh, we are still behind, the, for example, China. Mm -hmm. For us, uh, the China is on the top level of new technologies and high technologies. And uh, about the standards, I think that we, we have to know what is our goal, what is goal of the European Union as all. Well. And uh, now we are just, as I said, it's a single digital market, so mm -hmm. we are creating standards for all European Union for 500 uh, million people, but uh, these standards will, uh, will not uh, create any barriers. So it will, we will just, we have to know where we want to go, and uh, we want to offer European Union countries as a one partner for other countries. Geopolitics. Mr. Deputy Prime Minister, every one of us, after quite some time, really feel it now. Uh, one of it is about what kinds of technologies to be adopted by one economy or another. Whether to use certain products. What is the priority in technological cooperation? So, so we have um, challenges like Artificial intelligence, it's a big challenge for us. Then uh, blockchain centers of excellence, second one. Third very important is uh, 5G. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 
another very important are supercomputers. Yes. And the fifth one, autonomous vehicles. Mm. So we have these five goals, and uh, so that's why we need to prepare also very clear and simple regulatory framework. And uh, these five uh, topics are the biggest challenges for us. And uh, as I said, I also think that uh, it's an uh, open space for cooperation with other countries. Uh, how do you see that? I mean, in a way, security, of course, is very important for a country. But lagging behind in technology and taking advantage of the best is also going to be very significant in a way. So. Uh, how would you see the balance of these two and how would you make sure your priorities about these two are being met once you need to cooperate with a business partner whether it's from china or elsewhere in the world so from my point of view of course the future is the 5g yes and as i said the leader of the 5g is, is china definitely and I want to point out that there is a different approach between the European Union and, for example, the United States, because, as I said, we are open and we, as European Union countries and Slovakia too, will be open to cooperation in 5G technologies. Mm -hmm. There is only one risk, and we have to be sure that it's a fair business and fair game, mm -hmm. it's a privacy and a data protection. Yeah, it's, it's something that's about me, about you, about you Everybody. about industries, yeah. about our security and everything. But I think that European countries are very rational, so and they are very open. And uh, as you can see, some statements of um, the leaders of European countries, I mean, most of them are very open, and they said that they are open to cooperate uh, with China yeah. without any problems. And I am sure that this cooperation between China and European Union will continue. Slovakia and included. Of, of course, of course. We have really no problem and the uh, relation between Slovak Republic and, and Chinese company and mm. trade is very open without, really without any barriers. Mm. But of course the other challenge, uh, Mr. Deputy Prime Minister, is how to bring update your population in terms of how to create talents, how to attract the best talents. You talk about automation and car making. That's certainly one of those areas would incorporate a lot of the five potentials you just talked about. And also how to make sure you can nurturing technology or technological cooperation hubs, uh, you know, uh, academic studies. All of these are so much related. So how do you see that once again? part of the EU, but also on your own as well. For example, we prepare special products, so one of them, or spe special projects. The one project is for our talented young people, so it means so we would like to prepare position for them or prepare all, all steps we need to use their talent and to, to show them the way where they want, where they can, could be successful, and uh, it means um, we cooperate together with academia, with business partners, and with uh, foreign partners. But from my point of view, the more, the most important is to prepare a whole population. It, it doesn't matter if you are yeah. a kid or, or senior or elderly people, and uh, we prepare a special product uh, project for improving digital skills. We established digital coalition. It means that our people, it doesn't matter where you work or how old are you, uh, will be ready for digital transformations. This time you are here at the CIIE. It's about China, but it's not all about China. It's about a platform on which people trade and interact and also exchange of ideas and even culture in a way. So it's much more than just uh, let's buy things or let's sell things. Mr. Deputy Prime Minister, how do you see this trend in a way? I mean, this is probably one of those examples as to, as we are moving ever closer, there needs to be very diversified ways of platforms and interactions. For, for me, the Expo in Shanghai is a really opportunity opportunity for everyone mm. and for everybody and if I can say 
CL or you are leader of three big initiatives. So this Expo initiative is very special because it's import Expo. Yes. So it means that it's not about uh, I mean trade, import and export. It's about import export to Chinese market which yes. is one point four billion people. Exactly. So it's it's something special, it's unique and thank you very much. It's really I have to say that it's a really unique project. And uh, as I know, there is uh, more than 150 countries today in uh, Expo, and so it means that you have possibility to create 150 international contacts. Mm. Uh, so it's a really good idea, and I think it will uh, continue for many years. The second very important initiative is uh, Belt and uh, Road Initiative. It's also a platform which, is, uh, which was created by People's Republic of China and it's about connectivity. And the third very important initiative is uh, 17 plus 1 initiative. Yes. So it's a very close cooperation. Uh, there is a China and on the other side, or on the same level, mm. we have 17 uh, European countries. Mm. But of course, we also understand there are different opinions in a way. For example, China's interaction with the Central and Eastern European countries. Uh, whether, uh, how does that work in a bigger sense of the European Union? It's uh, also an interesting question, isn't it? Uh, you know, for you, and for me and for everybody it's important to improving uh, business and trade cooperation mm -hmm. and of course uh, this uh, some european countries uh, i mean some former western european countries <laughs> or old european countries they think that it's uh, something more because we live in a european union market but uh, I mean, everybody is responsible, I mean, all politicians are responsible for results and for deliveries for, for people, so, mm. and uh, we have 17 European countries uh, in this initiative, so it means that more countries is uh, for initiative than uh, against. I see. And from my point of view, that the future is... Uh, maybe about the increasing of number of countries. But you know, Mr. W. Prime Minister, the world is complicated. As much as both sides, China and Slovakia, wants to work on the traditional friendship, there are new factors coming, could be coming into the relations, for example, geopolitics. As you may know, uh, China and the United States these days are in trade talks. Um, and people also are concerned about the decoupling, at least in, sec in the tech sector, in between these two countries, and people wonder whether there will be overspilling effect to the other areas. Um, but U.S. is an important country, China is another important country. So this put a question to every other country in the rest of the world as to what to do. So <laughs> what about a plan coming from Slovakia? It's uh, complicated, <laughs> but for us it's also a challenge because these uh, trade barriers are created also for uh, European Union countries. So, so it means that uh, we have yes. to be oriented more to other countries and other parts of the world. So, and now, uh, in, uh, in the past, the United States used to be the biggest trade partner of China. And uh, these days, it's, it's not. Uh, it's, it's European Union. That's right. So, as I said, if somebody decided to build the barriers, we have to think that it's a challenge for us, and uh, we have to be oriented more to countries which are open. So, we as Slovakia, we have open trade. China, as um, Mr. President said at the opening keynote speech that the policy of China will be to be open to everybody. So I mean that thanks to uh, United States barriers, we can increase the trade between Europe, mm. between Slovakia and China.